Hello, Silver fans. This is T, and you're in the place to be for silver education, acquisition, and entertainment. And hey, the place to be is Collector's Gallery in Oak Forest, Illinois. I'm back talking with Sherry. And hey, if you like coin shop videos, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I make a bunch of them. All right, Sherry. Hey, thanks for uh, allowing me to come back to your shop and spend some time with you. And we've got some questions from the viewers. Are you ready to rock and roll? I am, T. Let's go. Uh, all right. Uh, hey, let's not waste any time here. We'll get straight into it. Roger Chip Webb wants to know, he's in, in I don't know, this might be a, a common occurrence where people inherit coins. Mm -hmm. He inherited a whole a collection oh. of uh, foreign coins. He has zero clue as to what the ballpark value is okay what's his first move he has to actually have them looked at by somebody because mm -hmm. they need to be broken down whether they're gold silver um the years on them okay what what the history is of mm -hmm. it the countries europe's been around for millennia so uh -huh. they've been minting coins for millennia the u.s has only been around for a short time so when people have foreign coins that are from the 1600s 1700s that's not old for europe so 90 percent of what you have is probably just going to be bought and sold by the pound mm -hmm. unfortunately um luckily you maybe you'll have some silver in there or some gold or something along those lines that'll mm -hmm. increase the value of it but it needs to be looked at either way take it to an expert yep. and it's got to be an expert that you can trust yes uh chris friesen wants to know uh, how has precious metals buying changed over the past couple of weeks, given world, <laughs> recent world events? I have not been able to buy much of anything over the counter. That has been shortcoming, being able to do that. I've been selling everything that comes in the store. If somebody brings me something, it's gone within minutes after it coming in. There is no shortage of buyers right now. Uh. just cannot get it, the retail public to come in and sell me anything, even when the market went up. Couldn't get anybody to sell anything. What's the ratio of buyer to seller? You have five uh, sellers not, for every, or five uh, buyers for every seller? At or? least, at okay. least, yeah. Ah, oh, this is a good question. Okay, uh, this <laughs> okay. one is from Gerald. Uh, he loves the uh, coin shop videos, uh, but a lot of people are new to silver stacking mm -hmm. and coin collecting, and uh, he would like to know about coin shop etiquette. Are there like things that people do that just irritate the heck out of you and they, they maybe they don't know any better? Um, when I say I close at five o'clock and they come in at 455. <laughs> <laughs> but no, there isn't no customers come in with questions all the time. I'm more than happy to take as much time as they need to answer whatever questions that they have. Spend as much time as they need, you know, discussing what it is that they have. Um, I stay pretty busy during the course of the day, so it's hard to you know, to sit down and have a long conversation with somebody, but as long as I have the time, yeah. I have no problem doing that. I, I really don't have any problems with, I can't come up with one thing with the exception of the time thing. Okay. <laughs> That's about it. Yeah, I, I, you know, definitely plan to spend an hour. There's so much to see, especially in your shop. I don't know where Gerald lives, but if the, you know, the coin shop has any amount of uh, product at all to look at, mm -hmm. you want to peruse everything, and yeah. there's always good deals to be found yeah. uh, if you just look right. close enough. Right. I get a lot of people just come in to look and see what we're all about, and I, since your videos, I've had so many new people coming in that just want to see what it's all about, because they haven't either been in a coin shop before or... They've been in coin shops where they didn't have a large display of anything to look at. So mm -hmm. I'm getting a lot of that, which cool. I think that's great. You know, more the merrier. Glad to hear that. And, uh, you know, as someone who is not sure and you know, wondering about etiquette, really there's only one way to do it. You get into a coin shop. Right. And there is no etiquette. It, there watch is what none. other people are doing. I like listening to conversations. You I have a lot of customers who do that, too. Learn a lot, yeah. especially when uh, you know folks are talking about numismatics that are a little bit over my head. Just <laughs> It makes me want to learn more. Mm -hmm. uh, Daddy Silverbucks. Man, I've seen this guy's videos. He's a content creator. Okay. He has a massive collection or stack. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I, Stack collection should be a better term <laughs> because he has a lot of really interesting and high-end stuff, not okay. just your run-of-the-mill 10-ounce bars. Uh, but he wants to know uh, that a lot of the bars that he's purchased are higher premium bars, mm -hmm. maybe vintage, maybe more interesting, mm -hmm. low mintage, uh, whatever. 
Uh, do you pay a higher premium for collector bar, or yes. you just buy it by the silver? No, mm -mm, no. If he's got older um, poured cast bars, that stuff always brings a premium. The old um, occasion bars they used to make the ones for Christmas and Valentine's Day and Easter and mm -hmm. birthdays. Going back into the 70s and 80s, people collect that stuff also, so I do pay a premium on that stuff. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, that's more than just general silver. Uh -huh. So, yes. It is amazing the variety of uh, subject matter that mm -hmm. they have in those bars. The old bank bars, uh -huh. okay? Um, banks back in the 70s and early 80s, they would make silver bars promoting their bank. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people collect that stuff. It's interesting stuff. It's stuff you don't see. So Okay, so you would... Uh, take that into consideration. Oh, most definitely. Yes. Okay. Coin Hound, another uh, YouTuber. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's kind of neat the fact that other YouTubers are watching yeah. you and uh, our videos here. Uh, Coin Hound wants to know what products do you uh, most want to see walking in the door and get excited about when somebody has to sell? When somebody comes in with a coin collection. Ah. That gets my blood pumping because you never know what somebody had that their parents collected, their grandparents collected. Um, that's the kind of stuff that really gets me going because you don't know what you're going to find in those things. So. Mm -hmm. And how often does that happen? Is that like a once a month, no, once every no, couple of months? probably once every couple of days. I'll get a nice oh, size really? coin collection that comes in the door, yeah. Cool. Um, just recently I just bought a 1795 Flowing Hair Bus Dollar. Coolest thing ever. Came from a private collection. A guy had been collecting for years. Mm -hmm. Came from his great grandfather. Wow. So something really cool. I mean, something like that. that where are you going to find it? So that's the kind of stuff that really gets me going. Cool. Uh, Joe McDonald wants to know uh, Sovereign or Pre 33, uh, which gold? You know, he says he's the same guy who you saved his marriage a video t or two ago. <laughs> okay. he, he's arguing with his God, wife. God, I'm glad. Time. I'm glad I saved your marriage. <laughs> uh, the new stuff or the old stuff? I know what I prefer, but <laughs> as far as, uh, you know, purchasing for the long term, what do you, which direction do you think well, people should go? If you're looking at sovereigns or pre 33 U.S. gold, that's two different markets. Uh -huh. um, the pre 33 gold that stuff's going to have a higher premium on because it's actually collectible coins. Mm -hmm. So that for the long term, that's something that you're not just buying for its gold value, you're also buying it as a numismatic value. Mm -hmm. So that's something that if you're looking at the gold market today and you buy a $20 gold piece, um, if gold goes up tomorrow, that's not something that you want to think about selling tomorrow. That's something you want to think about selling down the road, okay? Because mm -hmm. not only will it increase in market value that way, but you have the numismatic value also. Sovereigns and stuff like that, that's just gold. Okay, that's just bullion. That's just bullion. Straight gold yep. is gold, and that's yep, that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Bill P4, uh, when someone sells to you, do you pay for collectible slash semi numismatic value like you can get on eBay, or do you just basically pay spot? And I, I kind of wonder if, if sometimes people pay through the nose on eBay and then they. Do they walk into a coin shop and expect to get that same that's, amount? That's, yes, I hear a lot of that. People, you know, stay up late at night and watch TV and buy off of those TV shows or they bought something off of eBay or they bought something off of the Internet when they were surfing around and they seen something that they thought was cool and they come in and try and sell it and realize, oops, no, nope, that wasn't what I really thought it was. Mm -hmm. So um, I try to be fair with everybody as far as that's concerned, but if you bought a piece of silver and you paid $40 for it and silver's only a 25 mm -hmm. and it's just a generic piece of silver, right. there's nowhere for me to go with that, unfortunately. Sure. So, hate to ha dash your hopes and dreams as far as that's concerned, but <laughs> numismatics is different from bullion, so you have to pay attention to what it is that you're purchasing when you're purchasing it. Michael Bryan asks uh, a good question here. If someone brought in some coins, uh, et cetera, to sell, mm -hmm. would you give them a better deal if they were going to use that money in buying something in your shop? So I guess that event essentially becomes a trade. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and how does that work out uh, if they're do you take that into consideration? I, or, I do. Or is um, it just two separate? No, no I, okay. no, I don't look at it as two separate deals. But mm -hmm. I do in a, in a sense because when somebody brings me in a collection of something, I pay them the most that I possibly can. Mm -hmm. And when I'm selling, I want to sell it to you as cheap as I possibly can. So mm -hmm. I don't leave myself a lot of margin on some things. So it's hard to, depending on what the collection is, if I'm working on 1% on a collection and I'm selling you gold or silver bullion and I'm working on 1%, where's, where's the leeway? So, hey, uh, let's talk a little bit more about uh, what's been going on lately. 
is, uh, do you think uh, the way you're going with, you know, five buyers for every seller, yeah. that this is sustainable? Do you feel confident with your supply chain that you'll be able to meet the needs of your your folks uh, coming in the door? Oh, I, yes. Yeah, okay. I'm not reliant just on retail people coming in and selling me. I have wholesalers around the country that I buy product from. Mm -hmm. So I always have product available. That is not an issue for me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I wish I had more sellers, mm -hmm. obviously. You know, I w would love to be able to, you know, meet new people mm -hmm. coming in and chat and buy product from them. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I pay the same rate, if not more, for product coming in over the counter than I do for product that I have to buy wholesale. Mm -hmm. And it's, I'm able, because of the quantity that I buy, I'm able to get it cheaper wholesale mm -hmm. than if I pay for it over the counter. Does okay. that make any sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> hey, let me ask you then, we could totally edit all this out, but okay. the other day I was coming over uh, and you had a scare. I Is that did. Anything you care to talk about? Or um, It was a couple gentlemen who came to the door who were hoping to get in. They had full face masks on and... We're not in a position that um, I leave my door unlocked anymore and just let people come and go. Unfortunately, I did not get a good vibe from them. I had a girlfriend here who was also another jewelry dealer, mm -hmm. and she felt the same thing. So we ended up having to call an emergency button, have the police dispatched. Mm -hmm. um, the police came. They followed them. The truck that they were in was stolen. Oh, God. The plates were stolen from another deal car dealership. So I made a smart move by not letting them in the door, but yeah. it, you know, Thank God put for a spook that. in me. So, yeah. yeah. All this right. this business is not safe in any way, shape, or form. But that doesn't mean you're safe going to the grocery store or a gas station or anywhere else. I'm I'm at no more risk than any other businesses. But yeah. it was a scare. It's part of doing business. Part of doing business. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm gl uh, glad your spidey senses were tingling. <laughs> yes, they were. Yes, and, they were. And uh, you spotted them before anything bad yeah, happened. Yeah, most definitely. Yeah, because if they had made it in the door, it wouldn't have been good. So. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, thanks for being so Thank open you, about that. I and I certainly Please. appreciate the time. And uh, I'm going to do some shopping like okay. I always do Please around do. here. I don't and know what I have to show you today. I'm pretty <laughs> much out of everything until I get something to come in the door. So Yeah, yeah. I noticed, uh, yes, I yeah. see a lot of green space where yeah, I used you to see yep, more you product. Yeah, you take some video, yep, you'll see yeah. a lot of green space this week. So. But, you know, that that's what everybody's experiencing. Yeah. I was yeah. just down in Lafayette uh, videoing uh, Smith's coins down that way. Mm -hmm. And the same deal. Same deal, yeah. And, uh, you know, people are wising up, I think. Uh, the world circumstances mm -hmm. uh, are <laughs> scary, to say the least. Right, most definitely. And wise people want to be prepared. Right. Yeah, especially when they start talking about nuclear war or um, chemical weapons and things like that coming out of Russia. And now China's on board with Russia. I mean, the whole thing is scary. You don't know where it's going or who knows, you know. Yeah. It's just scary, so... Uh, well, speaking to that, uh, there was a siren uh, that was just blaring, and oh, I didn't hear that. everybody's dander went up, and uh, people started to get a little nervous as, what the heck is going on? Yeah. It turned out it was just a test of, at a random time. Well, I thought they do that the first Tuesday of every month. Don't yeah, they do it in I, the morning? I, I think <laughs> yeah. for, this is not the first Tuesday us, of the it's month. like on Saturdays at <laughs> okay. 11 a.m., yeah not a work day and it kind of speaks to the time like when you think about you yeah know, putin having uh his finger near the button right uh yeah. it's, it's scary it's scary it, times most definitely most and definitely. i think that's what's that's what's feeling a lot of this right now. circling yeah. back that's yeah. what's driving people to to do what they do and prepare the way they're preparing and inflation doesn't help this war doesn't help um the dollar going down the price of gas going up yeah all, all of that is creating to this frenzy. So. I don't see uh, an end to it anytime soon. And neither do I. Neither and do I, unfortunately. That is the worrisome thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, well, listen, let's not end uh, with doom and gloom. No, let's not. <laughs> let's not, please. Uh, I'm going to get to some shopping, and uh, I appreciate the time, Sherry. Thank, Thank you, you once so again. Thank you so much, T. Thank you for having me again. You got it. Hey, before I show you what I purchased today, a uh, special thank you to these channel members. And so without any further ado, here we go. Check it out. I always buy a little something, something. And hey, I wasn't kidding when I said little. That's a little bit of platinum. This is a little bit of gold, just a quarter gram. 
and a little bit of gold from the Perth Mint, my first ever Perth Mint purchase. Hey, thank you so much for watching, and here's more.